ones we need to run it up to 225 that is extremely accurate and very precise we really don't have a cocklebur problem anywhere else besides this field I've been pretty quiet on YouTube lately. That's just because we really haven't had a whole lot going on on the farm. Uh, we've kind of gotten to the point in the summer where we're caught up, don't have a whole lot going on, and we can finally just kind of take a breath. Starts out in the spring, we get everything planted, and then we got a side dress, and then we got a spray, and then sometimes we have trucking to do. And we, it seems like you get to August, and you just finally get that chance to just kind of sit back, relax, let the crop grow. You've done everything you can do, and it just, it's it's that time to relax so that being said we do have a little little job to do today we uh we got some cockle birds to spray there's a spot in one field that kind of flooded out when we got that big rain earlier in the spring and that field's known to have a cockle bear problem well what happens is all those cockle bears float to the low spot and then they all grow right where those soybeans got flooded out so i've got a little bit of roundup a little bit of 24d we're gonna mix up a small load and sprayer and go take care of those. So I've had a few people comment asking if I'm gonna be going to the Rantoul Farm Show, the half century of progress. We are going. We're taking the 1206 and our five bottom plow. We're gonna hopefully do some pawing with it if it doesn't break down. Last two times we took it, it broke down. But we got the steering wheel off of it right now. If you can see, the steering pump had a seal leaking and it was kind of getting this all oily, it was dripping real bad. And we figured we probably better get that fixed before we go down there. So we got a guy rebuilding it. He's supposed to put it back together, I think tonight maybe, or tomorrow or something. But we're gonna have this back together. We gotta do some cleaning on it. She's a, she's a little dingy. Put a nice coat of wax on her and get her shining up. You know, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty nice old tractor, I think. We might do something with these wheels. The paint's kind of peeling. Maybe we'll blow the paint off with the pressure washer and paint those, but. Yeah, going to be down there, so if you're going, look for me, come say hi. 12.06 and the plow will be down there. Let's get down to business. So we got our generic roundup, and then we got some radar up here. This is just a brand name for 2,4-D. 2,4-D is a chemical that will kill broadleaf weeds, and then roundup is kind of a, it'll kill everything unless it's resistant to it. So. We put the Roundup in, just in case there's any grass. 2,4-D will do the heavy lifting here, so. All right, so the sprayer is empty right now. I'm just gonna throw the garden hose in here because we only need about 225 gallons of water. I guess I should grab this. Pop this end off of here. This can stay here. All right. Turn the water on. So Dad's got a pretty good well here. I think I timed it one time. It's like seven gallons a minute. So that's pretty good for a garden hose. So I'll let that run in about 225 gallons of water. I think that's right. Let's see, I want to do 11, 11.25 times 20. Yeah, 225 gallons. So. Let's get some chemical up there and get that measured out. All right, so I was uh, I was talking to the camera and mixing and I forgot to hit record. In the process, I got water all over my camera. Good thing it's a GoPro, so it's completely waterproof. But anyways, we put some 2,4-D and we put some Roundup. That's just a jug of water that I use to weigh the hose down when I'm filling my rinse tank. So that's nothing. Uh, we got everything measured out. We got our chemical in and we are going to what are we gonna do? We're gonna let the water fill up. Let's see how much we got in there. Can't tell yet. I need to look at the other side. All right, so we are right here at 150 gallons. We need to run it up to 225. That is extremely accurate and very precise. We're gonna let this fill up. We need 225. And I'm gonna get these chemical jugs out of here, put them in the shed. We can use them later on something else. And once this is full, we'll go spray. All right, we got our water in. Pop the toes out. There we go. 
All right, let's go. Well, here we are in the field. Let's get this thing unfolded. Now, I kind of forgot I got to switch my nozzles. Um, I had my 15 gallon nozzles on. I thought I had my 20 gallons, but I didn't. So I'm running 20 gallons of water just because it's uh, it was easier to put 200 gallons in instead of 150, if that makes sense. When you're running that low of volume into the tank, it's kind of hard to measure it. So we're gonna run at 20, so I need to flip my nozzles real quick. Not a big deal. All right, so basically these nozzles that we run, they have different orifice sizes. So you wanna size them for how many gallons per acre you're trying to run and at what speed, because you wanna run in a certain pressure range. So we have two sets that we use, actually three. We have a burn down set and then we have two post sets, one for 15 and one for 20. So we got our 15s on right now. I'm gonna switch over to these white ones. I'm actually gonna run every other nozzle because we're not going fast enough to run the, all the big nozzles. So it's complicated, but we're running every other one, a 15, 20, 15, 20, and that gets me in that pressure range that I need to be. So if I start here, we always run 20s behind the tires because they kick up dust and it just does a better job. So we got a 20 here, skip a 15, flip over to a 20. So these uh, three-way nozzle bodies are pretty slick. You can have three different nozzles on and you just turn them whenever you need a different one. That one was not straight down, so it probably wasn't spraying. That one we skip, go to a 20 here, skip, 20, you get the idea. Okay, I got all my nozzle bodies switched. I'll kind of show you what we're dealing with here. So these patches of green out here, these are all cockleburs. There's, there's also some water hemp and a little bit of pigweed and a few other things, but mostly cockleburr. We really don't have a cockleburr problem anywhere else besides this field. I don't really know why it's such a problem here. If, you know, they were brought in with some manure at some time, but it seems like every year they come back in this low spot. Um, the problem is, I'm gonna see if I can find an actual seed. The seeds aren't developed on these plants yet, which is good, that's what we want. Um, Hold on a second. So these right here, these are the cockleburr seeds. It's kind of a poor representation. These ones are kind of full of dirt, but as you can see, they're they're pretty good size. They're kind of prickly, almost like a, like a sand burr. They're, they're not super sharp. I mean, you wouldn't want to squeeze down on them real hard, but they're light, they're big, and they float. So what the problem is, is every year, if we get a flooding rain, which we did this year, all the cockleburrs that were growing up on top of the hill that dropped their seeds, they all float down here to the bottom ground and then they all sprout and then you got a pond full of cockleburrs. They're really easy to kill. It's just there's so many seeds and they move around so easy that it's a problem. They really don't go anywhere else. You don't, it doesn't seem like you take them with in the combine. I mean, it just seems like this is the only field that we have trouble with. So what we like to do is when this floods out, we like to let the cockleburrs start growing let them get up, let as many of them that are gonna grow, grow, and then kill them before the seeds start to fully develop. Because once you get those fully developed seeds, it doesn't really matter if you kill them because those seeds are still there. So right now the seeds aren't developed, we're gonna kill them, hopefully slowly whittle away at this cockleburr problem. All right, so I got my pump on, I'm gonna shut down my sparger valve because I was mixing up the chemical that I dumped on the top open it just a hair so we don't deadhead the pump. Now I am going to, let's see, what do I want to do? I guess I can start my job. I'll be right back. Let's see, I want Roundup 24D. Uh, there we go. All right, so I want to see, um, Enlist Roundup. No, that's not what I want to see. Oh yeah, yeah. Where are we at here? Propaz Lambda. Well, that's that's weird. I'm I'm trying to show you the coverage map. Um, application rate. There we go. So, all the yellow in there 
I realize it's probably hard to see when they pop this off. So all the yellow in there is where I sprayed fungicide and insecticide on. And these big holes right here, that's where it flooded out and we have the cocklebur problem. So there's 11 acres in this field that I didn't spray. This is an 80 acre field. So that's where I came up with my 11 acres that I need to spray. But it just shows you the kind of problems we deal with in this part of the country. When we get a big rain, we lose all our bottom ground and the high ground. I mean, the, the beans look really good where they didn't flood out, but it's those bottoms, when we get a big rain, we just can't do much about it. Okie dokie, all right, so what do I wanna do now? Okay, I wanna spray a little bit out, check my nozzles, what am I doing here? Not that, what am I doing? Activate. And it looks like we are spraying, yeah. Still got some blue in there because I sprayed some Liberty last time I used the sprayer. So that residual Liberty left in the boom will just help do a better job killing these cockleburs. That being said, let's go kill some cockleburs. And we're done here. Got these cockleburs sprayed. 2,4-D and Roundup should wipe them out pretty quick. I would uh, be surprised if they're not wilted by the end of the day. So that'll take care of that problem. Hopefully, like I said, we can just keep whittling away at these cockleburs a little bit at a time, and maybe eventually we can just get rid of the problem. So yeah, quick little video. Not a whole lot going on on the farm. I apologize for not a whole lot of YouTube content, but there's just there's no content. There's nothing, nothing really that major going on right now so a couple announcements so like i said earlier i'm gonna be at the rantoul farm show if you see me there uh come say hi i'm gonna try and have some hats like this i don't know how many i'll get but um i'll have a few anyway first few people that come up and say hi you might get a free hat so as long as i can get them made in time that will be the deciding factor we are at the end of the video not much more to say Thanks for watching. Obviously, once we get into harvest, there'll be a lot more content. There'll just be a lot more going on that I can actually film and make decent videos out of. So that will be that. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.